The rifles in Resident Evil 5 are long-ranged, high-powered weapons that can take down many enemies in a few shots. And in this category, we have some of the worst weapons in the game to some of the best. From a slow bolt action rifle up to the high-powered semi-auto, this video will showcase each of them and all their glory and shortcomings. I will highlight the stats of the weapons and show how they can be used against the regular Bajini and also the mini bosses of the game. I highly recommend fully upgrading any weapon you intend on using for the higher difficulties as your items and money will always carry over to new games. That being said, all gameplay is on professional with fully upgraded rifles. Starting with the first rifle in the game, the S-75. This weapon is modeled after a real life Seiko 75. This weapon is found during Chapter 2-1 and can be purchased afterwards for 2000 gold. In Chapter 2-1, you'll get some helicopter support from HQ during a drawn out fight with the local hostiles. Progressing forward, a large group of enemies will jump out of a building in the back. Once they are dispersed, go inside the building and the S-75 will be in a case on the table. The S-75 is the most powerful rifle in terms of damage, but is also the only bolt action, therefore making it the slowest out of the three. Fully upgrading the S-75 will unlock the longbow for Sheva, more on that later. Upgrading will cost you a total of 90,000 gold, the stats are as follows. Firepower of 2,000, reloading speed of 3.30 seconds, and a capacity of 50 rounds. The second rifle in the game is the Dragunov SVD. This weapon is modeled at the real life SVD Dragunov. This weapon is found during Chapter 2-2 and can be purchased afterwards for 4,000 gold. In Chapter 2-2, after you emerge from the mines, you will go into a building and have a cutscene. Afterwards, there is a locker to your left with the SVD inside. The SVD has less power than the S-75, but it's semi-auto, so it has significantly faster rate of fire. Fully upgrading the SVD will cost you 62,000 gold. The stats are as follows. Firepower of 1300, reloading speed of 2.41 seconds, and a capacity of 18 rounds. The third and final rifle in the game is the HK PSG-1. This weapon is modeled after the real life HK PSG-1. This weapon is found during Chapter 5-3 and can be purchased afterwards for 4,000 gold. In Chapter 5-3, during your catwalk battles with Magini and Reapers, you will find yourself in a room with a lever that powers a nearby platform. The PSG is in a case directly behind that lever. The PSG is slightly less powerful than SVD, but has less weapon sway and has an upgradable scope. Between the two semi-autos, it really just comes down to personal preference, as they are very similar. The PSG will cost you 64,000 gold to fully upgrade. The stats are as follows. Firepower 1200, reloading speed of 1.70 seconds, a capacity of 15 rounds, and increased scope magnification. The final weapon in the rifle class is the longbow. While not actually a rifle, you unlock this weapon after fully upgrading the S75 so it's close enough. The longbow has been covered on this channel in a standalone showcase linked below so I will not go into full detail here. However, here is a quick rundown. It's exclusive to Sheva. When using a controller, there is no reticles, so you have to use a mouse and keyboard to see where you're aiming exactly. It'll kill pretty much any standard Magini in one hit as it does 1500 damage per shot. It comes standard with infinite ammo, and all of this will cost you 50,000 gold. Now that we have the basic information of the rifles out of the way, I will go over how they each stack up against the game's sub-bosses in order of appearance. Starting with the Executioner. This is probably the hardest boss to go up against with the S-75. With the surrounding horde of enemies, you will need another weapon to focus them, as the S-75 is too slow and will get you killed. Be careful to hit his critical spots, but not overconfident that you'll stun him, because one missed shot will make you wish you had a different weapon. For the SVD, this boss isn't too bad. With a high rate of fire, you can easily take down the surrounding enemies. Several shots into the Executioner will take them out. The PSG will be more of the same as the SVD throughout this video. The same strategies apply as they are essentially the same weapon. Next for the Chainsaw Magini. The S-75 held up a lot better against the Chainsaw Magini. He is easy to stun and with his high damage you can easily follow up until he's down.
the SVD and the PSG make this boss much easier. There really isn't much of a strategy other than to hold down the trigger. Onto the Giant Magini. This is another tricky boss to deal with using an S75, as he's usually flanked by multiple enemies. He's easy enough to stun by shooting his legs, but you just need to be careful he doesn't charge you or others don't sneak up on you. With the SVD and the PSG, the previous worries of him closing the gap or flanking the enemies do not apply here as the fight is over pretty quickly. Next up on our liquors. With the S75, you actually have to run away from the liquors and get some decent shots in. The rifle cannot consistently stun them with its slow rate of fire. So if you stay in one spot for too long, you'll just be trading blows at that point. Any more than one liquor at a time and you'll be in trouble. The SVD and the PSG can take out one or two Lakers without an issue. You could probably take on multiple at a time, but there are also better weapons for that as well. Now we have the Reapers. The S75 isn't terrible against the Reapers as long as you land your shots on their weak points. A few misplaced rounds will cost you your life though. With the SVD and the PSG, this fight isn't super easy. The Reapers want to close the distance and are fast at doing so. Missing a couple shots could be deadly for you. Finally for the Gatling Gun Magine. I was actually surprised that the S-75 held up well against his boss. The rate of fire with this rifle is timed almost perfectly to him lining up to shoot. Meaning, if you aim for the head, you could just indefinitely stunlock him until he dies. The SVD and the PSG make this fight easier due to the rate of fire, but the same strategy applies here as well. Just stun lock them until the fight is finally over. That concludes my showcase for every rifle in Resident Evil 5. And now on to my final thoughts. I meant it when I said that this class holds the worst and best weapons in the game. It is in my opinion that the S75 is by far the worst weapon in the game to use on Professional. I do not care that it does 2000 damage per shot, the DPS for this rifle is abysmal. On Professional, where one hit can take you down, DPS is crucial and every shot matters. I found myself getting swiped in every other direction using this weapon because of the lack of follow-up. I cannot recommend anyone use this unless you're looking for a challenge. Upgrade it to unlock the bow and keep it in the vault. That aside, the SVD and the PSG are outstanding weapons for Professional. Quick follow-up, high rate of fire, and good damage. When it comes between choosing the two, I prefer the SVD for its upper hand and firepower, but the two rifles can be interchangeable. That wraps up the weapon showcase for the rifles of Resident Evil 5. If you liked the video, please subscribe as I will continue to make weapon showcases like this for the game, eventually covering all the weapons. 
Check the description for links to everything involving Resident Evil 5 and my weapon showcases for Resident Evil 4. Thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.